I really enjoyed the first Dragon's Dogma game. It was pretty unique with the pawn system and all of that. And we are now getting Dragon's Dogma 2. We're getting a showcase today. That's the footage I'm showing behind me. And the game does look pretty good from a graphical standpoint. Maybe we're not blowing, uh, you know, just the, everything out of the water that we've ever seen before, but I think it looks nice. And uh, we're also getting some information like a release date. The release date is March 22nd. Looks like pre-orders are available now and they do have some various pre-order bonuses, although in general, I don't recommend pre-ordering games until we find out how they perform and, you know, are they good. But with that in mind, we are also getting the PC system requirements today. So let's take a quick look at this and I'll help you figure out how your PC might line up to these requirements. Because as you can see, this is kind of one of the more basic PC system requirements lists. Uh, uh, just up on Steam, we're not going to get one of those big charts like we've seen some, from some other developers. I mean, who knows, maybe we'll still get something like that later on. Uh, but for now, this is what we've got. We've got minimum and we've got recommended. Now, I will say that this is better than the uh, minimum and recommended that I have seen in the past where it doesn't even tell you a resolution or frame rate target. We are at least getting that. Uh, so here we are seeing in the minimum that this is estimated performance to be 1080p 30 frames per second, although noting that frame rate might drop in more graphics intensive scenes. And then they are also mentioning that that's not including ray tracing. If you'd like ray tracing, you need to bump up your GPU to a 2080 Ti or an RX 6800. I have a lot of thoughts about that, but we'll come back to that later in the video. We're also seeing on the recommended specs that they're targeting 2160i at 30 frames per second. An i there, not a p. Now, one possibility is that that is a mistake. It could be a typo, but I actually don't think so. Because as far as I can tell, this game is using the RE engine from Capcom. And why is that interesting? Because in other RE engine games, for example, the Resident Evil games, there's generally been a rendering option called interlaced. This is a PC world video when that uh, when Resident Evil Village came out, taking a look at the uh, image quality difference between normal and interlaced. By the way, all my sources will be linked in the video description today. And so this is a, a way of boosting performance by lowering the uh, rendering resolution in a different way than what we get from things like DLSS and FSR. Interlaced rendering, as far as I can tell, and based on the name, seems to be where you'd probably be rendering kind of every other line of the image and then, you know, lacing those back together where you, uh, you know, maybe you render the odd lines and the even lines, you know, alternately and then kind of put it back together. Something similar to what consoles often do with checkerboard rendering, that kind of thing. And while it can look pretty good, you do definitely notice issues with things like hair. I don't know how well that's coming across in this video and this still screenshot, uh, but there can also, uh, there can be some kind of image breakup there. But in general, I guess what I'm saying here is I think there's a good chance that's not uh, a 2160p typo. It could be that they're talking about rendering at 4K resolution using the, uh, the RE engine's interlaced rendering mode, which again is, is basically think of it as a type of upscaling. You're not rendering at the full native resolution. And so keep that in mind when we look at them saying that you only need something like an RX uh, 6700 or a 2080 for 4K resolution. Also, that is 30 frames per second. And again, we've got the note about ray tracing requirements. But before I get into more of those details, uh, let's knock some of the quick stuff out of the way. First of all, uh, looks like you're going to want to have 16 gigabytes of RAM in your system. That's pretty normal these days, although sometimes we still get games saying that you don't need quite that much at the minimums. And then the CPUs were going from a 10600 and a Ryzen 5 3600 uh, to a 10700 and Ryzen 5 3600X on the recommended. Notice that both of these are only saying 30 frames per second. Um, they're not guaranteeing you 60 frames per second. And if we take a look at these CPUs between the minimum and the recommended, there's not a big difference. The 10600 is a six core 12 thread CPU. 
uh, from a couple of generations ago. This came out in 2020, so we're, you know, three-ish years old now, maybe going on four. And the Ryzen 5 3600 is a six core, 12 thread CPU. And this is very similar to what you get in, in the gaming consoles. It's not identical, but generally performance wise, it's pretty similar. And again, this is kind of a 2019 chip. So it's, it's basically telling me that consoles are probably gonna be targeting 30 frames per second and that these CPUs should be roughly equivalent to what the consoles are capable of. And if you jump up to the recommended syst uh, system requirements, going from a 3600 to a 3600X, if you look at this, there's not a lot of differences, guys. <laughs> you can tell that the boost frequency goes up a bit uh, and that's about it. So the performance difference is not a lot there. Jumping from a 10600 uh, from the Intel uh, minimum to the Intel um, 10700, you are gaining two cores and four threads, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the defining difference since we've got the 3600 and 3600X both being six core 12 thread. Uh, the 10700 would be a bit of a higher boost uh, clock. Uh, well, actually, they're both boosting to 4.8. Uh, their base frequency, um, 2.9 versus 3.3. Uh, I mean, I don't know, guys. The point is there's not a massive difference between these, and we're also not having anything listed as a 60 frames per second GPU, uh, CPU. So now that doesn't mean that these CPUs can't hit 60 frames per second, or in some scenes, we're not getting a separated out 30 frames per second versus 60 frames per second system requirements. But a lot of games, especially more open world designs that are designed for current generation consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, can often have pretty hefty CPU limitations. And that certainly could be a thing that we're seeing here where you might need a significantly more powerful CPU to hold 60 frames per second. That's a question uh, uh, I still have is how high of a CPU are you gonna need for 60 frames per second? I don't know. Um, also generally system requirements when they say 30 frames per second, they don't actually mean you're locked to 30. They mean that you're not gonna be able to lock to 60 frames per second. Um, and so they just call it either 30 or 60. And I think that's what we're seeing here. And again, with some possible dips. Now we've got GPUs. Let's talk about this. So the minimum is a GTX 1070 or a RX 5500 XT, and they both list eight gigabytes of VRAM. You know how I mentioned that this is using the RE engine? Uh, a lot of the Resident Evil games uh, can be very VRAM hungry. That's That can be a factor in the engine. So it could be a possibility that this game really won't run well without eight gigabytes of VRAM. But again, we, don't, we aren't really given what graphics settings that this is targeting, just 1080p 30 frames per second. So curious if you could turn down more, but this is the minimum listed requirement. Another interesting thing is the 1070 versus the 5500 XT. This is Tech Power Up's relative performance chart. And this is also how you should get a good idea of how your GPU would compare to the ones being listed here, because odds are you don't have one of the ones listed in this chart. So how does yours compare? Well, first of all, the 5500 XT is generally only reaching 77% of the performance of the 1070 on this chart. And that's pretty interesting, uh, given that they're listed at the same tier. Now they're not super far apart. And again, 30 frames per second, I wouldn't take this as it's like a benchmark and they're both delivering 1080p 30. More of this is probably in some of their lower end test systems. And they verified that you're generally able to play the game around, you know, without dipping too far below 30, except for the more intense scenes. Um, and probably kind of generally somewhere in between. So if you hear kids running around, it sounds like my kids just got home. So we'll wrap up this video. But anyway, if you hear uh, stomping noises upstairs, that's what that is. You're not crazy. If you're listening on headphones, you're like, is, is somebody around? Is, is somebody uh, outside my house? Somebody on my roof? Anyway. Um, now, where does your GPU fall in comparison? So you have something like an RX 580, that's pretty similar performance, but they did list the eight gigabyte VRAM thing. And I think some of these don't have eight gigabytes of VRAM. A GTX 1060, not too far off from the 5500 XT, but it's a six gigabyte card, or there's even three gigabyte mm -hmm. variants. And this is specifically listing eight gigabytes of VRAM here. So I'm guessing VRAM could be an issue for people with GPUs that could otherwise be in, um, in a performance, uh, spot that that kind of falls in this in this range. So uh, 
up. So if you wanna see other GPUs similar to the 1070, again, we got things like the RTX 3050 is kind of right around in that ballpark, things like that. So this would probably be, you know, you can play the game, but you're not gonna be locking 60 frames per second. So what would you maybe need to lock 60 frames per second? Well, if we're getting 30 frames per second on a 1070, do we need to double that performance? Um, that would pull you into something more like a, uh, a 4060 Ti or a 2080 Ti or a 3070. Um, now that's if we were straight going from 30 to 60, but like I said, Oftentimes when a system requirements lists 30, you'll actually be, you know, maybe more like 40, but you're just not to 60. If that's the case, you could probably get by with something a little bit less, uh, less powerful than that. And maybe something like a 4060, a 7600, a 6650 XT, you know, those might end up being okay for 60 frames per second. But again, that's me trying to just help speculate a little bit off their system requirements list. Now we also get to the uh, ray tracing requirements where we get a 2080 Ti or a 6800 and they list both of those under the additional notes. So I don't think that goes to the same 1080p 30 because then it's also the 21, uh, 2160i 30 and it's listing the same two GPUs. So that's a little bit hard to speculate off of, although I will at least uh, compare those two GPUs. The 6800, uh, if we look at it compared to the 2080 Ti's performance, it is generally a bit faster, but this is this chart is basically uh, rasterized performance, non-ray tracing performance. NVIDIA generally has a bit of a ray tracing performance advantage, um, but Resident Evil Engine games generally haven't had heavy ray tracing workloads, just lighter ray tracing workloads where the performance hit isn't massive and where I actually would expect these GPUs to perform pretty similarly. So that sounds like a pretty reasonable ballpark, but here's an interesting note. Why do I think they're listing the, 20, the older 2080 Ti and not listing something more like the 3070, which performs very similarly? Well, the 3070 is an eight gigabyte graphics card and the 2080 Ti is an 11 gigabyte graphics card. The 6800 is a 16 gigabyte graphics card. And even without ray tracing enabled, uh, they're listing eight gigabytes of VRAM here uh, for the minimum system requirement. Now, again, sometimes system requirements are overblown, but I will mention again, RE Engine games. Games like Resident Evil 4 Remake that came out recently. In that game, when it launched, if you tried to enable ray tracing on a GPU with uh, eight gigabytes of VRAM, the game would simply crash. It's been patched since then to where now you just get stuttery gameplay, although you can reduce other settings, um, especially texture settings. And that's another thing I've noticed with this engine is oftentimes their texture streaming settings want a lot of VRAM, but you can turn them down. Uh, and if as long as you don't go too far, you won't really see a visual impact. Now again, that's not this game, that's other games using this engine. So um, I think that the reason they're pairing these is that these are 11 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes, and I have a feeling that you'd struggle with the ray tracing settings on an eight gigabyte GPU. Although again, that's me trying to speculate off of a pretty bare bones system requirements list here. All right, last thing, let's talk about the GPUs for the recommendation, which again, 2160i 30 frames per second. I feel like this is a really weird system requirement, but I think this is probably given because they're they're very probably thinking very console focused and consoles if they're not gonna offer a 60 frames per second performance mode, which some games don't, are often locking to 30 frames per second and offer a quality mode, which often outputs a 4K image, 2160 image, at a 30 frames per second, and sometimes uses some type of upscaling method to get there, and this engine offers that interlaced upscaling, which is again why I think 2160i is probably not a typo here. Now that's putting us to a 2080 or a 6700. Now, this relative performance chart does include most GPUs, but the 6700 non-XT was kind of a weird uh, stealth release uh, that didn't end up in a lot of people's reviews and also didn't end up in this list unless you search for it separately. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna scroll up and um, you could do this as well if you don't, um, uh, if you don't uh, have yours uh, listed in this, or maybe I don't scroll up, I'll go back to the uh, just t uh, system requirements uh, database, or sorry, GPU database. I'm gonna type in the 6700 
and we'll find the 6700 not XT version, which they are different GPUs, different VRAM, different performance levels, different power consumption, all of that. We'll set this as the baseline. One thing about this GPU, it's the closest thing on a PC to the GPU in something like a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X. They're not identical because the consoles use an APU with unified memory and there's some cuts, there are differences. But this is the closest thing to a console GPU, which is again why these really feel like just basically taking your console stuff and plopping it into a PC system requirements list with the closest, um, uh, with the closest uh, things we have in the PC space to your console stuff. Again, these CPUs, very close to what's in the, the PlayStation. So I think that's what's going on here. Anyway, the 6700, if we set that as the baseline, the 2080 is very similar performance. We can see that that's listed within 4% of the performance. Again, this is mostly based on not ray tracing, uh, as far as I can tell in Tech Power Up's performance chart here. And again, different individual games vary, um, but these are a pretty good ballpark figures. So where does your GPU fall in comparison to that? So this is some similar performance to something like a 1080 Ti or a 6600 XT, a 2070 Super, an Intel Arc A770, although some games end up performing uh, very differently on Intel if it's not optimized for it. That's something we've seen on some games, but not others. Um, something like a 4060 or a 7600. These cards are all in this general ballpark. And again, you could kind of scroll up and down and see like if you have something like a 6700 XT or a 3060 Ti, you're a little bit more powerful than that. But again, this is giving us kind of a weird resolution and, and, and frame rate. So it's hard to tell because most people with GPUs of this class are probably not gaming at 4K 30. They're probably at 1080p or maybe 1440p and shooting for more like a 60 frames per second target. So again, um, I think our better idea of, of how to get that was probably based off the 1080p 30. And like I said, kind of doubling that performance. And I already talked about that a bit earlier in the video. So pretty bare bones system requirements here. And like I said, they seem pretty inspired by the, um, uh, what kinds of hardware is in the consoles and then just kind of porting that over to, uh, to what we're seeing um, in this PC system requirements list. If we get a more thorough system requirements list, I could either do an updated video in the future or maybe post a linked comment down below or something like that. Cause like I said, March 22nd, we still have a while till the game actually releases. And like I said, I will link my sources in the description, including this showcase video, if you wanna take a closer look at that. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.